Hi, Gavin here. I'd like to share with you an insight I got from working with Nick and Michelle, two of my Double Your Business clients uh, yesterday. We had a fantastic day working on their strategy, on their strategy for the next six months of growth. They posted phenomenal results in the first six months of working with them, and we're now on track to one and truly double their business in the 12 month period. But what I wanted to share with you, what I wanted to uh, pass across is this insight that I've got. So, well, we all set targets. We all set goals that we are uh, that we have to work towards. Uh, targets, key performance indicators that we use to measure our performance. And there's that old management adage: "What gets measured gets done." But sometimes we set ourselves financial targets that no longer um, n no longer inspire us, no longer pull, call, call the best from us. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you set a sales target and for whatever reason you've had a setback. You've done everything that you possibly could have done but you had a setback during that period of time. Well, uh, Nick was really uh, gutted yesterday because a key project that he'd been working on, a major contract, through no fault of his own, the customer of his customer delayed the project. So in the supply chain sequence that he's a part of, it's delayed the contract until the new year. He was gutted around that. Um, so, two couple of points that I want to uh, share with you in sort of insights from around that. So, the thing that we did, we did was, uh, the first thing I said was, on the path of growth and journey, um, we would like our path, our growth curve, or, uh, to just be straight line, wouldn't it? From go from A to B and there's a straight line. But it rarely goes like that. It's more of a wave that heads in the right general direction, but the, in that wave there's peaks and then there's troughs. And during those troughs, it could actually feel like things aren't working, you put a lot of uh, sweat, blood and tears and energy and effort in and it could actually feel quite demoralising that down in those troughs you're not getting the, the level of the results that you would like to get in terms of um, feedback in terms of your business. And so the first thing I want to do is rec I want you to recognise that in those moments in those troughs what can you learn from those? Because it's in the struggle, um, as Ryan Holiday in his book The Obstacle Away uh, talks about, he's saying that it's the moments of adversary, because it calls it adversarial growth or post-traumatic growth, that in those moments of the struggle, as long as we're prepared to look for what are the things that we could do to improve, what are the things that we could do to enhance our skills and our capability or come back stronger, then they'll make us, as I say, stronger, sharper, and improve the, what we're delivering. So look for the those dips as opportunities for adversarial growth so that you can come back quicker, sharper, fitter, better in the delivery of your product or your service to the marketplace. The second point that we want to raise is the measures that you set yourself, are they, what well, they're doing to you? Are they, you know, for some financial measures like profit targets or turnover sales targets are motivational in and of their own right. But for others, particularly if they've had some setbacks, those targets can be disappointing, they can cause disengagement or you actually do energy levels to drop. So as I was exploring with Nick and his business partner and wife Michelle, okay so what is it that you have achieved? Um, Michelle brilliantly and immediately pointed out and she said, so how many families did we feed, how many families did we feed this week? And, uh, and what they do for a business is that they provide temporary workers who work on, uh, on, on uh, manufacturing contracts, for example. And they'll provide work to people, to families that otherwise um, may not otherwise have actually got the work, may not otherwise have actually achieved any you know, income that week. So one little measure that they had was they'd fed 221 people within the week. 221 families. Well, it brought a lump to my throat and I said, whatever you do, never beat yourself up if you've not landed a particular contract in this month. It's gonna happen anyway, it's just gonna be a bit a three month delay. Look at what you have achieved. You've achieved, you've fed 221 families this week. So much more than many many others would have, would have done so. So we immediately re-expressed every single one, every single one of their targets in terms of revenue targets for them and the team in terms of how many families they're gonna feed. I thought I needed a name from this so it won't be a key performance indicator, let's make it a compelling purpose indicator. So what's your compelling purpose? Because the impact on Nick was immediate. Um, it just immediately, I was like, the shock to the system to recharge, immediately recharge the stand back, you know, uh, uh, and recharge the, the system, put the volts back into the system. But he said, now those targets have now so much more meaning. 
And I'm absolutely certain that with this team back in the office, uh, when he gets back to the, the, the office tomorrow, he'll be sharing with them what their compelling purpose indicator is, that in other words, how many families are they going to be feeding this next week. So as you're setting yourself for measuring progress, then please make sure you look for measures that are going to excite you, engage you and compel you to take action. If what gets measured gets done, you know, look at what, look at the difference that you make. So for example, if you're um, baking or cooking or, or, or making a, a food product, um, the difference is that moment of you know beautiful taste that you're giving your giving your customers. Are you taking pain away from them? Are you saving them stress or saving them time or helping them take a step towards a dream or aspiration? What is the difference that your product or your service makes for your customers and your customers' customers? And set a measure around that. Use that to engage people so that you can make a difference. And then you can be, become a part of the movement of good people doing good things to make a difference.